All right, one, two, three, one, two, three, and I think we are good to go. All right. Hey, everybody, happy to be back with you guys. I got my internet back sometime over the night, I was assuming. Loki says hello, although I don't have any treats for him right now. They're behind that closet door. Um, he'll get one in a little bit, I assure you guys. But say hi, Loki. Oh, I think he just wants to say. Oh, he wants to play. Loki, up, oh, up. Oh. No, pretty much has a massive rope in his mouth, and he's like, oh, yeah. Oh, you should go, boy. But anyway, uh, a lot of stuff to talk about here today. Um, turns out my sister's not coming until tomorrow, so I do have time to stream today. Tomorrow is when I'm not going to have time to stream. So tonight, everything's good for streaming a few times today. Now, probably a little bit around 6 o'clock, maybe a little bit around 10 o'clock as well. A nice long stream tonight. I may even combine the later night streams here and just have a stream from like maybe... Um, seven o'clock to ten o'clock or six o'clock to ten o'clock have four hours right there and then i might go out for the night i'm not entirely sure uh i probably will just actually go to bed since i have to pick up my sister tomorrow from the train station but anyway kind of an interesting day let's talk about it and hey alberto happy to see you man hope you're doing very very well hey kilo as well i know you i don't know if you're in here actually because it looks like this message from it was a hot minute ago but if you are in here kilo i appreciate you being here as well all right and thanks everybody lilit chonk town crypto rider cryptic sniper to me wayne destruction x aiden iron bear what else tony haram and wolf of brooklyn there we go all right happy to see all of you guys in here let me pull out bitcoin here so after the fed did its thing we all know that um everybody was optimistic everybody was very very happy Bitcoin kind of is dying back down here again, even though we've had our moves, you know, uh, you can even see things like the NASDAQ, they're still doing fine, the SPY still doing fine, again, up against the level of resistance, that being said, but still uh, moving upwards over the last couple weeks or a couple days. But Bitcoin here, we're, we're just facing some struggles here. And I was a lot more optimistic a couple days ago, so I was like, okay, if we can just try to go sideways and we hold these levels for a while, then you could think of a uh, momentum starting to cool off a little bit on the downward side and then we can kind of figure our shit out and then we can probably have a reversal here after today yesterday wasn't too big of an uh, of a uh, of a hurdle so to speak after today I'm, I'm starting to wonder like what happens next here how much more do i want to dollar cost average into this because uh you guys know i haven't been doing any long swing trades and that i've just kind of been buying a little bit here a little bit there i'm wondering if i should take a pause from that not on the thing we're going to do later on today with the fair desk things but just personal wise um because i'm wondering if bitcoin is going to try to break down below sixty thousand, or if we're going to manage to hold it up here because what i was hoping for is if you guys go over to the daily chart here you just look at some of the basic uh momentum categories here I was hoping they might slow back down, but you can see that actually when it comes to the MACD, it's re-accelerated all of a sudden just off of those two days. I wouldn't be too mad like about this day. Like I said, today where we're starting to fall down again, that's where all of a sudden we're like, ah, oh, man, this is not looking the best here. So let me make sure this is at 100% it is. All right. Go back over here to the weekly. And now on the weekly charts, again, this doesn't close for another two days and four hours. So we got some time. We got some time to fix this back up here. But the MACD, of course, is getting a little bit weaker. Not bad, though. Still fine. It's the stochastic, which right now is at a death, as, as crossing over. And it's this RSI right here, which is about to cross over. That's giving me a little bit more pause. So we might actually see another dip here over the next uh, over this weekend. And that might cause a little bit more chaos than we want to deal with, of course. Let me smooth this down a little bit more, though. There we go. All right. So that's really my conundrum at this point in time. Are we really going to just stop right here and go higher? Or do we, do we really have to go for like maybe a, a week or so, maybe two weeks or so to consolidate a little bit more and start heading back down here towards $53,000? Um, again, I'm not saying we are moving down that far, but I'm, I'm slowing down on my buys at this point just in case I can get some juicier buying levels over the next few weeks. And let me go over here very fast. You know, just zooming out a little bit for what Bitcoin has been doing over the past few years. We have gone up a lot. We're facing a little bit of resistance right up here from these all-time highs. I'm not too concerned about that. Um, but it's really... Excuse me. Ah, cigar. 
how far do we want to fall from here before we make that next run up to try to go up towards like you know 80,000 90,000 and so forth I think it might be a few weeks just because of uh, we have to wait for that inflation data to come out and then on top of that then we have the having and I think it's okay if we ever drop before the having just because of how overextended we are uh, and of course if I go back over here you see the RSI is very high up compared to where it normally is um, typically in these cycles RSI you know gets high but not before the all-time highs if that makes sense we normally the rsi peaks before bitcoin peaks if that makes sense uh uh so let me go back over here can i go back to this one there okay oh that's there okay i forgot i cleaned off the bitcoin chart so there's not as many technicals anymore all right so that being said let me just make sure i have on these points of support that we're going to be having over the next few days just in case we come back over for now i'm just going to have that line right there 60,775 on the Bitcoin to tether chart but that strong move that we had off of the very dovish uh, FOMC meeting it, de it went down gradually this is what this was to be expected right we kind of went up pretty high right but this second dip we weren't able to hold support and you saw momentum just sort of all of a sudden start to really shift down again so I'm taking this as a much more cautious approach because all of a sudden it looks like we're just ready to start falling down straight uh, over the next like day or two. And then we are, we are in fact going to have those um, death crosses between the 20 and the 200 and the 50 and the 200. The 50 and the 200 would probably happen somewhere over here, I think, if you kind of measure them out in your head. That seems to be around Monday or so. And usually I would probably follow the move. So, you know, I'm a little bit concerned at this point. I'm still hoping that we can make something of a higher low here. But I would say if you guys do want to make any long swing trades here, you know, and again, without the momentum on the daily charts or weekly charts going along with it, you right now, if you want to hold for like more than 24 hours, you're just going to have to wait for Bitcoin to make a move above this right here. We're going to have to consolidate and then break out. That's the only way I see it happening right now. And right now, nothing about Bitcoin, like I've been saying for the past few weeks, honestly, um, best week and a half, two weeks, nothing really is convincing me to start loading up on stuff. Um, dollar cost averaging, sure. I'm even starting to say, like, mm, maybe I shouldn't be doing as much of that because I might want to just hold on to some money and see if we do break down a little bit more. It's kind of a, it's a gamble on, on, and of, uh, on and of itself, excuse me. So I'll be watching to see if this plays out here. And actually for now, let me actually extend this out, something like that. That way, if we do find a way to make higher lows over here, then consolidate, then break out, that could still be a move that saves us from actually having those death crosses at this point, which I think would be nice because again, you guys know I have ADHD, but when I'm looking at this type of stuff and I'm looking at the way moving averages work, my mind can kind of track to see where it might go because if you look at the 20-day moving average, we're looking at the last 20 days of activity here, and the last 20 is right here. So we're going to be giving up candle bars with a close price of you know 64,000, and then we're going to be replacing it with another one that's over here, kind of okay, but then these ones over here, thinking about EMAs and whatnot, these ones are going to have a lot more weight here pretty soon, which will be nice for us. Uh, maybe giving us an opportunity. But right now, I'm just being patient, guys. Uh, being very, very patient. Very, very patient. Um, as far as the fair desk buys, I think I'm going to do that later on tonight with everybody. Um, and then I have to... Yeah, that's about it. That's about it, yeah. So... As far as I'm concerned there, guys, it's kind of just a eh, type of environment. I wish there was better news out there because I was really hoping that uh, my mind was going to be changed over those last few days after Bitcoin had the big run up with the uh, FOMC meeting. But now you got Bitcoin over the last 24 hours down about 2%, Ethereum down about 3%. Not really much bad. You know, Dogecoin still up 20% over the last 24 hours. Oh, no. It, it, okay, they had to refresh. I don't know why they refresh like this, but let me just restart. Ethereum's down 3%, Bitcoin's down 2%. Dogecoin is up 0.69%, 0.76%. Right. So there's a lot, of, a lot of iffiness here. You do got some uh, interesting things like APT and Internet Computer, which are both up around 10% here. So that's pretty good. But mostly everything is pretty much down here with a few exceptions. And I think that's going to be okay. Oh, gosh. I didn't keep on smoking this. But yeah, so right now, I would definitely be looking at um, day trading over anything else here. And for those of you guys like to short your day trading shorts might actually prove to be okay because I think the the daily is all bearish right now. The four hour is all bearish right now. The two hour is bearish right now. The one hour might be getting back above. One hour is kind of mid right here. 
but I think it's enough for people that want to start trading this down kind of like on a higher low to make them moves here. But uh, for me personally, again, I'm just kind of sitting on my hands and waiting for things to get a little bit better. Here's the five minute here, just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Coming down a little bit, but not not really crazy. All right. And hey, Ty, um, no, my sister, I just talked with her. She's coming tomorrow at one o'clock, so I can stream all day today and I can't stream tomorrow. <laughs> Although, Although, what do you call, um, I will probably stream in the morning, but anything after the morning tomorrow is going to be much more difficult, because again, uh, my sister and I, we're going to be, so much smoke from this thing, it's all oily, we're going to be moving the desk into my other room, so that's going to be like a, uh, that's going to be a task, <laughs> that's going to be the task to say the least here, um, And hey, crypto, happy uh, crypto, Ricky. Excuse me, happy Friday, happy Friday. Bitcoin struggling into the weekend. Yeah, that's what it feels like. It definitely feels like that. We haven't found a way to get momentum to get back into a spot where I feel comfortable going long on Bitcoin right now. Uh, as each day goes by, besides the FOMC day, of course, I get more and more bearish on Bitcoin. So uh, I'm cooling off some of my dollar cost averaging right now. I'm gonna wait to see if we plummet maybe one more week and start coming back down here to fifty three thousand dollars or so, and then from there. Um, I'll probably start to buy in maybe somewhere when we break down below maybe $56,000. I'll start to buy in again. Now, I'm not for sure this is going to happen here, but the way we're going, uh, I can definitely see another week of at least wicking down here to trying to find a support, bouncing off. And then, of course, if we are going to make a larger move, that would come. But, you know, how do I say this? Um, uh, okay, there we go. Uh, sorry, sometimes my brain has to click because I'm tired today. Uh, now, you guys know how the only thing that really concerns me during this period of time from a technical perspective isn't so much the momentum because typically we'll, we'll figure this stuff out, you know, Bitcoin will go higher and some of that, but it's those patterns of the past that always concern me a little bit more. And those patterns are things like death crosses between, right, uh, the 20 week moving average and the 50 week, which typically leads for Bitcoin going down a lot typically lead to Bitcoin going down, and of course, Bitcoin going down here. Typically, they're not the, the best of signs in the market. Now, we are nowhere close to that happening. We have uh, probably until summer, until something like that may happen at the, at the earliest. But what we do have here is we are going to have a death cross here, most likely, if we do punch down back down below $60,000. We probably are going to have a death cross here. And that kind of irks me because typically once Bitcoin makes an all-time high and we do have those death crosses, they usually have some pretty bad moves that follow it. So I'm wondering how bad if we do follow this pattern, how bad of a move that might be. Um, now, the good thing about this, I guess in some sense, some sense is like, you know, back over here in 2021, back in March, we did have that death cross. We did see Bitcoin come from 57,000 all the way down here at what the low point, it looks like to about 28,905. Then following that, you know, we did have another rally here that went to another high. Um, I'm wondering if something like that is going to happen similar here or if it's going to be like a one and done type of thing. I don't think it's justified to say it's one and done at this point in time just because of the way the, the market's been going as a whole and on, on par we are looking for rate cuts and things of that nature. But things might get a little bit more volatile here pretty soon. So um, I'm probably going to not shave off any of my long cycle type of stuff, but I'm definitely going to try to be more prudent about when I buy uh, until I see momentum really start to pick back up. Because if the daily charts keep on going down like this as far as momentum and we don't find a floor, and again, this this maybe be, would be, this talk would be more justified, I think, next week if we're making lows. Now, if we start to break back down below this low over here of 60,865 and this low over here of 59,255, that's where I get a little bit more concerned. Until then, we could always have an abrupt breakout here going into the weekend, but I never try to price in those abrupt breakouts. Um, they're just too, too hard to time, and if most of the time, if you try to do it, it just doesn't work out in your favor. Um, but that's kind of what I'm concerned about right now. So I'll be patient with it. You know, nothing to really worry about at this point for me. Um, 
except for just kind of stay the course and wait for another move because we got the April 10th is CPI data and I don't remember recall the exact day but in 30 days we have the Bitcoin having so after that things might pick up a little bit more here but uh, maybe I should show you this here so if I go over here let's take away the oscillators just pull up Bitcoin here you see Bitcoin relative to a lot of stuff it's actually doing okay right now Bitcoin's at $63,000 we shouldn't be disappointed in it what we're disappointed in is it's just not going straight up right but Ethereum uh, I should get rid of some of these double Fibonacci levels but Ethereum's coming down a little bit more from those highs. Solana, I think Solana has a long way to go down if Bitcoin goes down though. Uh, excuse me. ADA's been coming down for a while. Dogecoin's been coming down for a while. I'm still much more interested during this period of time in loading up in altcoins and maybe not so much in Bitcoin right now. But as I look at all these tokens and how much they've come down, you know, I'm much more, well, maybe not XRP. XRP so far has just been brutal to hold. Like this is XRP's monthly chart. All right. Oh, uh, I just I, I just hope it fixes itself here pretty soon. It'd make my life a lot easier if this thing would just finally start to pop. Uh, <laughs> let's give it some time, I guess. Um, but as far as everything else, you know, these are. Uh, oh, maybe I should actually show you guys all these things in log. So this is with log off. This is Bitcoin, basically. You know, that's how it looks like. Monthly charts, of course. Solana, right? Some things have gone up a lot more than others, right? Looks kind of funny when you look at it like this, but it, it matters. Um, and so at this point, I think we're still at the beginning of a move, and it looks like we're do, taking our first cool offs of a larger move that's going to be coming here. <coughs> Although, yeah, it's kind of hard to look at the charts like this with log off. There you go. Looks a little bit better. Okay, let's go over here though, back to the 15 minute chart for Bitcoin. There we go. Why is this balanced off like that? But at least the drop we saw coming down the, the, the hole here this morning has cooled off a little bit. Do I think uh, April will be a downhill month? I would anticipate April being probably more of a sideways month, not so much a downward month. We might finish off March coming down pretty hard, but April might just be more of a sideways move if you ask me. see if you look at the us uh, d index uh, and bitcoin weekly and monthly charts from now until february it's completely opposite it tells us what is happening uh usd is going up it got rejected a few days ago but there still is the opportunity for the official breakout i think i was expecting a breakout to probably happen on uh what was it wednesday yeah because uh again if you guys watch me on wednesday you guys know how dumbfounded i was about how dovish jerome powell was um, but I think you're talking about the DXY over here and the breakout that was supposed to happen. Oh, it did break out. No, no, no. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. What time frame is this? Yeah, it did break out today. Yeah, that's that's one thing right there. Yeah, because Jerome Powell killed the breakout right here, but looks like the momentum is too strong. So yeah, I definitely agree with you there. That's for sure. I didn't even check on this this morning. I was checking on oil as my oil stocks. Are all over the place right now still good but you know i want to make sure they're staying good but uh there we go and of course if you're going off of the dollar index when's that next level of resistance probably best to go over right here we're facing a little bit of resistance right here at 104.54 then there's a little bit up here at 105 basically we might get as high up as 106 yeah so despite him being dovish, the dollar index didn't necessarily buy it. That's interesting. So you might even say the market's pricing in more inflation. And I guess that makes sense if Jerome Powell is saying we don't care about inflation. We want, we want to protect the economy over inflation. I guess that's kind of what you would expect. There you go. So that's nice to see. Well, you know, kind of nice to see. So, of course, Bitcoin is not going to like that. Just like on the other side when the dollar index crashed there for... The heck was that? Somebody just went in there with a bunch of buying activity. I'm gonna I'm gonna cool this off here a little bit. Let's make the minimum trade be around four hundred thousand dollars. 
There we go. Or, yeah. $410,000 for the trades, and then the liquidations will start off at $200,000. There we go. That way the thing isn't flashing left and right here. No Man's Land? Very much so. Oh my gosh, this cigar. My, this is not as good as the other one. Which one is this? Liga Provado? Yeah, freaking. Oh, it's tunneling. God damn it. Basically it means it's lit, but it's only burning on the inside, not the outside. So it runs out of stuff pretty fast. And it could be uh what time am I gonna be streaming tonight? I'm not entirely sure. I'd probably go somewhere between six and seven is when I'm gonna start. And I'll probably stream for three to four hours at that point. I don't mind doing the longer streams on Friday nights, to be frank, because it's a Friday night, it's chill. You know, I've got a couple scars. I even got a, uh, well, I got this one right here. This is a um, Perdron Damasco one. This is a pretty nice one. Never had it before. But I also have some Cubans I want to smoke tonight, which will be really enough fun with you guys. Let's see. My Milady dogfight stream price freezes let me see if i can find it out i don't know what's going on with it, it might be the servers or it might just be robin hood having issues because i saw robin hood having issues with a lot of my other accounts today let's go over here very fast live teams the prices are moving let's see is bitcoin price moving here it's still moving so it looks like it i fixed it a little bit earlier but it looks like it's doing fine now Any Dusty, speaking of your desk, I want to see a picture of your setup. Oh yeah, I'll make sure I'll make sure to have one for you guys here. Um probably Sunday. Sunday. It doesn't look all too fancy. It's just a nice desk with a little electronic motor, you know, with it. But basically it looks really clunky because of all the the way I have to have my computer and stuff. I need to go to Best Buy and uh, actually buy longer HDMI cords. So my computer is like right there, and I want to have it set to the side so you guys can see it while I'm um while I'm working and streaming and stuff, right? Because eventually, uh, I don't know how I'm gonna have it, but I know I wanna have a camera kind of facing towards the side and not just kind of, oh no, I want the camera to face the sto to, straight towards me, but I don't know, maybe I'll have a side camera as well, maybe just a web camera or something, and I can switch over so you can see all the monitors when I'm looking at stuff, although it's usually not too sexy everything to look at because like, you know, one is my streaming software, one is you guys talking, one is, and then it's like a little bit of everything as far as all the little widgets you guys see on the streams and whatnot. And hey, Cyber, happy to see me, man. And hey, Kira, definitely another bearish day here. XRP is like a stable coin that struggles to stay stable. <laughs> uh, yeah, it definitely has not been doing good. Um, I just hope it peaks eventually. I don't know if it ever, ever, ever if it is at this point. The DXY wrecked. Mm -mm. The D, uh, the dollar index is doing fine. But we talked about this on uh on last uh Wednesday, this this recent Wednesday here. Let me go over here to the weekly chart. Let's get out of all this. Actually, let's keep the momentum on here, just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Now we don't normally look at it on this chart, normally look at the other one that has that trend line and stuff. But basically, we were talking about this trend line right here. Let me just have this extend to the right here. Um, but we were talking about whether or not it would break down. And over the past few months, it's really found reasons to come down out of nowhere. Now, I don't know why we were coming down in February. I really, really don't. Um, and, why, uh, why we, uh, and why we came over in March, there wasn't really too much of a reason for it. Now the market's kind of adjusting. I feel like there's a little bit more manipulation happening in our system at this point in time. And on top of that, if you guys didn't know today, I believe the government passed a uh, spending bill. This isn't good for those of you guys like inflation. House passes $1.2 trillion spending package hours before shutdown deadline, sending it to Senate. This is one of those bills that's so big and so vast that nobody ever has time to read it. So all the money pretty much is wasted, uh, you know, corruption and the like. Um, but 
The package wraps six spending bills into one to fund three quarters, only funding three quarters of the government. Oh my God. Uh, so and it only funds it until the end of the fiscal year. So when is the end of the fiscal year? A majority of Republicans voted against the measure. They still had support. It was still done underneath the Republican speaker. You can't blame Democrats on this one. It's everybody's fault. Uh, let's see. Actually, end of fiscal year. So when does this actually go until? So this pays for our government until September 30th. Just until September 30th. Oh, man, we are going wild with our spending now. But basically, a lot more money in the system. That does pump things up a little bit more. And you should see a little bit more excitement here from the dollar index as we try to start pumping back up towards, um, you know, probably up towards 107, if not 105. I think that's pretty a, re a realistic move that we can expect to see here. Um, let's back up a little bit more. Let's go to the monthly chart. We might actually have a secondary spike of inflation, which would just be god awful because it'd mess up everything. So next up, here's the big goal. This is something you should probably look at for the next two months at least. Um, this is the dollar index on a monthly chart here, and I've just added a trend line from the peak we had in September 2022, very high inflation during that period of time, and over here over to November 1st data, and that trend line just goes across. If we break above this level. Oh, oh boy, guys, I don't know that that could be months of Bitcoin going down here, which would not be. Uh, would not be pleasant. Can we cool off, though? We have a level of resistance up here, which is fine. We haven't been at these levels since 2002. Uh, uh. Well, let's hope we get rejected off of it. So let me actually bring this back over here, make this a little more fit. There we go. Go to the 15 minute chart. I mean, we're already testing it out right now. Now, I don't know if this is legitimately the right spot, but it, let's see. I bet CNBC is talking about this right now or Bloomberg or Fox Business or something. So, okay, there's the, there's the point. So we haven't broken out of it yet. Let's be as precise as we can by going to the 15 minute chart. Forgive me, this is probably gonna take a minute here. If it'll actually let me go back that far. No, it won't let me. Can I do it on the four hour chart? A one hour chart? I won't, no, it won't even let me squeeze all those candles together. Okay, let's do a four hour chart then. Better than daily, better than a weekly, right? All right. Peekaboo right there, the high we experienced in September 2022. Wait a second. Yep, okay, yeah, yeah. Four hour chart, okay. And right here. There you go. All right. So on the four hour chart, since we did there, this is what we want to look at. We're not there yet. But by tomorrow, we might be. As I drop burning ashes onto my arm. Oh, that was a little hot. Uh, but yeah. <sighs> oh my god. I think the spending bill really sped this up here over the last day or two, though. Okay, there we go. So people that are waiting for the long-term investment, we should wait until a Bitcoin is around 52000 and bag everything possible. A lot of people are talking about 52 k There is different levels of support here. What I would do is I would have scale endpoints. So because Bitcoin ran up so fast here, the levels aren't really, there's not like a lot of support between this. That next level of support's between 52,000 over here and 50,500 levels-ish. And then if you really, really want to get crazy, we talk about $40,000. Um, 40,000, not as likely unless something really happens with spending and inflation, like it really starts to go parabolic again. And inflation, not spending, although they are kind of hand in hand here. Uh, yeah, fifty-two thousand seems okay for me though. I'm gonna do a larger buy-in, probably around fifty-seven thousand. Then probably do another one over here towards fifty-five thousand. 
then 53,000, then 52,000, and then I'll kind of wait to see what happens next. But each one of those will probably only be a couple thousand dollars worth of buying in for cryptocurrencies. Uh, I got a lot more powder, and I'm basically just waiting to see what happens. Now, I've already, I've already done my dollar cost averaging for this part right here. So if something does happen and Bitcoin decides to go parabolic again, you know, uh, all of, out of nowhere, it just starts to go higher, which technically happens quite a bit in these bull markets. I'm still going to have a position in the market. So I'm still hedging just in case something doesn't go, uh, unless we don't fall down, if that makes sense. In case we don't fall down, excuse me. There we go. But you're probably going to see a lot of people as time goes on talking more and more bearish about those types of moves, uh, for sure. The hard part is timing, right? That's the hard part. Um, does... You can have all of this stuff done, but if the market just doesn't move over there within a certain time frame, you're kind of out of luck and you're not really making money at this point. But again, maybe you don't really want to be making money at this point. Uh, it might be better just to kind of relax and wait for things to settle down a little bit, which is what I've been doing for the last few days, but we really haven't had the opportunity to settle down. Uh, DXI, but yeah, but real rugged, it's the opposite. The, do the dollar index is doing too good, too good right now. Three months ago, the speculation was that we would have a rate cut by now. See, that's the thing, Mr. Steve. I think, I think my, I'm a little bit more biased because I didn't think we were going to have a rate cut because I thought inflation was going to come back up because every time, well, and if you guys have been here for a while, you guys know I keep on showing you those double peaks and I've been showing them to you from last year. Or like, when are we going to bottom out? When we might try to peak again? Um, but again, uh, one thing. The one decent thing yet is that we haven't had the full reacceleration of the overall CPI number year, year over year. So when I go over here and show you guys the 10 minute, the 10 hour chart, 10 year chart, excuse me, you can see that we've spiked up here. We've come back down, but we technically haven't started to, you know, curl back up here. We haven't started to go back up like that. So that's kind of a good sign here. If we start getting back above 4% though, I think the Fed might actually have to raise rates at that point. Um, so far, they're saying they're not. So far, CNBC is saying they're not. So far, Fox Business. So it's just me. It's not not established you know, news organizations that get paid a lot more shit than I do. But I need my back pillow. Um, if we do start to see that, I, I we would probably have to raise rates even more, which would be crazy especially for banks but it looks like the forecast at least from trading economics is 3.1 percent for next month uh, which again is we're going to be learning it april 10th after that i think we should i think we should be a little bit better um you can see components right here energy inflation went down a little bit here last previous or did it accelerate uh rent inflation no, no, no. Yeah. So what do you call it's it's uh energy inflation is getting a little bit better. Rent inflation has got a little bit better. Services inflation got worse. Core inflation got pretty much the same. PPI year over year. Yeah, we, we are speeding up a little bit here. So, yeah, but we haven't had that full on turnaround again. Most likely they're going to try to go higher for longer, but if things get worse all of a sudden, because again, we're just injecting lots of money into the economy and of course, um, you know, wars and shit around the world, uh, that does cause some issues here. Meme coins are what's holding my bag up right now. They've definitely been good. If meme coins come down a little bit more, I'm definitely going to try to buy a lot more of them over the next few uh, months. And hey, everyone, Drew Estate in the house. <laughs> they're good. Uh, H. Upman. I love a good H. Upman. I actually have some upstairs. What's right here? Ion Bar. Uh, try Bolivar or, or Romeo and Juliet. They're good. I have uh, a lot of Bolivars. Those are my favorites. Actually, I'm running out of Bolivars. Uh, the Romeo and Julieta. I haven't had too many of those. They're very light on flavors, so I need something like a coffee to drink them with. They're like a great morning cigar. And I think they're probably better in the springtime or the summer, when, which right now is like cloudy and gloomy. Um, 
but once it gets a little bit sunny and I can start, you know, pumping out the espresso machine every morning when I want to go sit outside with, with the latte, have Loki outside chilling out, you know, um, I'll probably be smoking some of those then. How many screens do I use? Oh, I use three screens, three monitors. I used to have six back at my old apartment, but then I realized I just didn't need as many. And I don't think my GPU unit appreciates me using this many uh, things. Um, maybe because I, I do gaming or something, but I'm not entirely sure. I got to buy a new computer here pretty soon. I'm probably going to buy it in some uh, Christmas and July sale for that Best Buy has. NA Cyber, do I have a video of the indicators you use on the channel? Yeah, I just put one out last week, I think it was. This one. How to day trade strat uh, best day trade strategy. Yeah, sorry guys. Best day trading strategy for beginners, how to trade Forex stocks crypto. It's basically the same setup I have right here and how I use it. Um the only thing I would say, just like I tell everybody, is it's not gonna give you trades any time of the day all day and stuff like that un unless maybe you like the stock market a little bit more um typically when the crypto market goes long you know if bitcoin is all these bearish technicals and even if a an altcoin has somewhat bullish technicals i would still lean into like what bitcoin is doing over any altcoin any time of the week maybe except for ethereum sometimes yeah um but um when i do it it's usually um i i i follow the do watch the video. You'll understand what I'm talking about. Uh, do I stream your charts from a separated PC? Um, the ones that you guys see that are not me and my face on there. Yeah, I have to rent servers for that. I, I pay money for those. <laughs> those. They're, they're a little bit hefty when you consider like each one has its own server. Each one has its own trading view paid account. Each one has their own little, you know, software associated with it. Um, but I enjoy it because you guys seem to like it a lot and it's a good way to get more viewers to the channel, more subscribers. It's probably the largest investment I have in this channel, honestly. To the right side of my trade, that screen, those are just trades. So those are just basically uh, the top part is trades that are happening, sells and buys. And then the bottom part of the trade that's maybe a little bit slower, those are gonna be liquidations that you guys are looking at. So if you guys start to see a lot of liquidations happening, that just means walls are being chewed up. So if it's a wall on the support side, it's being chewed up. If it's a wall on the resistance side, it's being chewed up. And you just understand that, okay, if we're at a level of resistance, you're more likely to pop. On the charts, though, you're more likely looking at the change of characters and stuff. There we are. to here if sailor's dumping he knows something is sailor dumping i haven't heard anything about sailor dumping and hey harris i should be streaming uh tomorrow morning but not much after that because i'm moving my desk around and on top of that i'm picking up my sister from the uh, the train station and i'm gonna hang out with her for a little bit uh she i thought she was gonna come today so i had like i had a lot of time today opened up but uh no she's coming tomorrow so if i want to go over here and somebody just ask something sailor Nope, nothing about him selling. If you guys want to check out what's happening in the ETF market, Grayscale is probably still selling off today. Yeah, they sold a little bit of Bitcoin off. Not as much as usual, though. They probably sold about four or five thousand dollars, uh, four, four to five thousand Bitcoin off. Fidelity inflows. They bought a little bit today, but not a lot. Basically, 20. BlackRock. BlackRock bought up quite a bit of Bitcoin. Oh, no. They didn't buy any Bitcoin today. Sorry, I'm looking at all these things, and it's all... Uh, I know you guys can't see it, but it's basically just uh, those coins that are gift gifted to them. We're seeing a lot more of those fake gifted tokens. Like, somebody gifted them, like, five trillion of this Ushiba token here. Um, so I don't know what's going on with that. Um, back up a little bit more here. Bitwise... Bitwise bought a little bit of Bitcoin, but not too much. And Vesco bought 65 Bitcoin today, not the most, but still, you know, they bought some. ARK Invest, oh, we talked about them. They didn't really do much today. They didn't do anything today, actually. They're not selling, they're not buying. And then Vennec here. 
they bought some Bitcoin today, probably about five hundred dollars, five hundred Bitcoin or so. So, Fennec is still buying, but again, that's because they have that good deal right now where the ETF are is a zero zero percent fees till twenty twenty five or something. This cigar is probably dead, and it, I haven't even smoked much of it. I let it rest. It's not dry. It literally might just be too oily on the outside, which is usually something I like. It's a, like it's a deeper flavor. I'll keep lighting it up. I like the flavor of it. But, um, XA USD. Oh, which one? Which one? Which one? This one right here. There we go. City index. Huh. I mean, it's still doing fine over the past few weeks. It's just not moving up a great amount. But, you know, for gold. It means something, you know, when you look at gold like this and like, oh, gold is at all time highs, except for maybe I should. Oh, you want to look at this. Which one do you want to look at? XAA. You don't want XAU, you want XAA. What is XAA? Did you mean gold or did you mean something else? My mind went to gold first. XAA. Yeah, I don't know what XAA is actually. But we can go back over here to um regular gold. We get a little more data on the screen. Let's go. This is the monthly chart. You know. We are at all time high gold here, which is kind of interesting. Back during 2008, the financial crisis and whatnot. Right? Five, six, seven, eight. Gold crashed for some reason, which is kind of funny. Um, but Again, gold is up at all-time highs. That is to be noted, probably because everybody feels that inflation is going to be getting worse and people want to hide and put their money away. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not going to be the best. I'm waiting to see if the job market starts to buckle at all over the next few months, though. Sixty-five Bitcoin rookie numbers. <laughs> well, we don't know what it's going to end up averaging out to because sometimes they might not need to put as much in there. Um, you know, if I was a hedge fund and I saw Bitcoin running up like this, I probably would wait for it to drop too before starting to move a, move a portion of my position into them. NA Pro, but yeah, there definitely is a support level back down there around $30,000, uh, 30, 30, excuse me. Uh, Crypto Lifer. Crypto Lifer still, uh, he just put out a video as well. Um, Positions one three five seven nine. Oh, I don't even know what that means. Um, ICP. Can I buy Luna? You guys can buy whatever you want to. I'm just saying I'm not buying anything for the foreseeable future as far as weekly holds. I'm basically going to be sticking to day trades, and then I'm going to be looking for opportunities to buy primarily alt tokens here, altcoins, uh, for uh, the move in another few months from now. ADK twenty first of April. That'd be kind of nice to see. All right, let me go over here very fast. Do they have anything on the dollar index or anything like that happening right now? Apple shareholders. As Republicans propose to raise Social Security retirement age. No. Top country millions. Of course we are. Why else are you going to spend your money? Uh, not trick. No, I don't see anything right now even talking about the dollar index, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. Let's go over here to no, but there's no bond news. I want to have bond news. If I keep scrolling down, would that make anything? No. What was that? Okay, Phew, I thought my I thought my computer was messing up again. Uh, but yeah, we'll probably have more information here soon. But they're just not talking about it. Oh yeah, Princess Kate has cancer. That's that's sad. Um, oh yeah, that was a terrorist attack today in Moscow. Dude, the world's going to, the world's going in a weird spot here. Very weird, very weird, weird spot. And I think Putin was just reelected as president or something. And good elections or not, <laughs> uh, but that's probably what they were protesting against or 
combating against whatever you want to call them. They always back up the train for their friends who missed the boat. I mean, that's the way it's been going on for a long time. At least right now, you know, if you guys are looking for those dips that you guys have been craving for, they're here, right? The people that are buying Bitcoin right now are typically the people that maybe it comes down a little bit more, whatever. Uh, there you go. You know, regardless it comes down here, whatever. We all know it's most likely going to go higher come April, May, June, those types of months uh, coming into the summer. Um, but how do I say? Uh, it's definitely just been a conundrum here because we have to have rate cuts come into play to really get this secondary boost up here. We're going to need to see rate cuts. Even if the economy is not in good spirits, it doesn't matter. You know, Bitcoin will go up just like in 2000, um, uh, 2008 with all the financial crisis going on with the Dow Jones and SPY and the NASDAQ and stuff. Let's go back over here to 2018 spits bad. There you go. You know, once everything fell down for a while, the economy was still shit in 2009 and 2010. That's how come uh, Obama lost the house, even though the, um, uh, you know, the stock market was roaring back. Uh, the economy overall wasn't. People can suffer all across the America and the, the stock market will still be going sky high. Um, so just keep that in mind with Bitcoin. Even if people start to lose jobs and stuff like that, as long as rates are being cut in anticipation of that, Bitcoin should do a lot better. Although there might be an initial shock value to that as well that makes, maybe makes things come down a little bit more. Is Ethereum dead? No, 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 no. Do I have a group where I post signals? Uh, no, I do not. Uh, gold brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just showed gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that wasn't the gold ticker, though. I'd never even heard of XAA USD. Let me see if I can find it on uh, CNBC. XAA. Invesco Bloomberg Commodities? As XAARF. Yeah, so, yeah. You probably meant the, the gold one. Yeah, yeah. I know he's B way. Um, so Mike, what are your thoughts on Aerodome? It seems like a possible gym long term. I would have to know the ticker for that one personally. Um, Aerodome, yeah, I don't know. I would have to see the ticker on it. Predict on gold? Gold should keep on going higher. Again, we just, oh, for those of you guys that don't live in America, we just passed a 1.2 billion, uh, excuse me, 1.2 trillion dollar uh, budget bill. And that, that's supposed to fund three quarters of our government, not even the whole government. And it's going to last only until September. Okay. So 1.2 trillion for April, May, Mar April, May, June, July, August, September for uh, six months. 1.2 trillion for six months of time. And again, that's only three quarters of the budget, three quarters of the budget. So, you know, goals should keep on getting higher. And of course, inflation is looking to go higher. Oh, thanks, Big Rap and BG. I appreciate it. A E R O. If you're looking for long term, it's probably not going to be with the stock market here. But let me look at it anywhere. Aerospace stocks, Birds of Steel. Is it not in the USA to be traded? Aero. Oh, I see. It's cryptocurrency. Okay. Coinbase. Well, yeah, this thing has been doing pretty well. It might bleed out eventually with Bitcoin coming down here, but this definitely does look like a nice play. Let me look at this. Uh, oh, yeah. Tiny market cap. Look at that. 124 million. That makes it easier just to kind of dollar cost average this thing and just wait. Okay, so let me go over here to the Twitter and the web page. Twitter has a following of about 32,000. They got people liking their posts and things of that nature. Essential trading and liquidity marketplace on base. Aerodyne Finance is the next generation AMM designed to serve as base central liquidity hub, combining a powerful liquidity incentive engine Vote lock governance model and friendly user experience. Aerod uh, Aerodrome inherits the latest future from Velodrome version 2 
Aerod Aerodrum NFTs to vote. Okay, distribute token emissions and receive incentives and fees generated by the protocol. Sustainable growth of protocol. 1.19 billion annualized trading, 16 million of fees, 33,000 active, only 33,000 only 33, viewers, and it's doing that well. A user, excuse me. Hmm. So they got different liquidity pools in here. The APR is wild on these 55, 56%, 70%. Uh, I might be a little bit more cautious of holding this in a bear market, but in a bull market, this thing is printing out some really good opportunities for people. I wonder if these are locked or not. APR, volume, fees. APR, 16,000. Oh my God. Yeah, so <laughs> there definitely seems to be an incentive to buy into this thing. I might dollar cost average, of course, just because look at those high prices. But again, it's only at 120 something million dollars. So you might want to be patient with it as far as just sticking to dollar cost averaging. It looks like it's on Coinbase, though. Looks like that's it. So, yeah, if you can buy this on Coinbase, by all means, just, you know, toss a few bucks into it and see where it goes. But definitely a longer term investment. I, I'm always a little bit more cautious, though, when it comes to those bear market moves, when everything's kind of fluctuating between some of those uh, higher APY, APR uh, tokens. Porked. I like that one. Hey, Dale. I uh, was already aware Bitcoin was going down since yesterday, but you said in your heading, here's what to do. So I must have witnessed, you know, it tells us what to do. Oh, I'm basically just waiting for Bitcoin to continue to drop, and I'm going to be looking to buy a little bit later on. Right now, I haven't seen any incentives to be buying Bitcoin so far. I know it's kind of hard to refresh it or, like, you know, say it over and over again when uh, people are joining the stream every minute. I think, how does it work with Bitcoin? Like, um, I know I can find it out here. Because uh, YouTube streams have a lot of churn on them. There's like a core people of people. There's a core group of people that watch me all the time. They're usually sitting around and watching me from the beginning of the stream to the end. But then there's a lot to just click on the stream for a few minutes. They learn what they want to learn or ask a question and they uh, they hop off. So for this instance, uh, let's see. Yeah, there's like 32 people joining this stream every minute, and we're staying steady at 273. So it shows you how much how much churn goes on with the YouTube channel. But yeah, like thirty two people a minute. Yeah, no worries, deal. Happy to help you out. Um, oh, it's right here. He says he's dumping MicroStrategy to buy more Bitcoin. Oh, well, that's not bad for Bitcoin. I thought he was dumping Bitcoin because if MicroStrategy ever dumped Bitcoin, I'd be just astonished. Um. I can understand that. When you look at MicroStrategy, it's gone up so so much so fast. Here. Um, this is a monthly chart. 2022 crash went, <laughs> it's already back up to $1,500. I can understand why he wants to sell this in order to buy more Bitcoin. I can definitely understand that 100%. But uh, I'd probably be scaling out of that myself, actually. There we are. Actually, let's go to the one-hour chart. Ah, four-hour chart for Bitcoin. Because, yeah, we're still heading down here right now. Hopefully, we can try to hold this a recent supportive uh, 62,600 or so. But I see Ethereum also making the similar moves here. Solana also looking like it wants to... Solana is interesting. This kind of has a few support levels all the way over here, like one like gigantic order block, but it might end up coming back down here towards like 159 to 160 here over the next um, two or three days, because this is a four hour chart. I won't be buying a Solana until we break out above this trend line right there. Once that happens, that could be actually some really juicy news, but again, it probably won't happen until later on this month if, we, if it happens at all this month. All right, there we go. Anything popping? Floki's still doing a little bit better today. Boom is doing okay today. Luna is up a little bit, but I don't personally trade Luna at all. ICP still moving up a little bit more. FTM is moving up quite a bit. That's about it. 
even the Dow Jones closed uh, lower today. The NASDAQ closed a little bit up and the SPY closed down a little bit more here. Coinbase invested into the area. I got a position at 35. I was just looking for an opinion. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, from a company perspective, it looks good. From a technical perspective, it's so early that it looks like it probably will have a little bit of a crash here eventually. But on that crash, I'd probably personally would be taking an opportunity to buy into it. Oh, there we go. Uh, Sui? Yeah, let me see if I can find Sui. I don't know much about it, though. Oh, no, I know Sui. Never mind. Jesus. One of those days. Uh, not the best of breakouts as you guys can see the momentum really hasn't been strong on this for a while Had a breakout there with no momentum a breakout here with no momentum And you can see it really hasn't been the best results for just trying to trade a particular breakout, but Ran straight up until level of resistance got rejected from that level of resistance and now It looks like it just wants to come back down a little bit more Four hour just started to turn bearish You'll probably see this start coming back down here to maybe 165 or so. And then um, where you might be a little bit more concerned is if you go to the four hour chart, you add this trend line over here. Right there. That's where I would say it's probably heading down if Bitcoin takes that next step down below $60,000. Because it's been, it's been managing to have a pretty good month uh, compared to a lot of other assets out there. So it definitely is going to have a lot more further to come down here. But I would say next step is probably going to be down around 164, 165. Don't worry about the 145, 150 levels. Don't worry about that for maybe a, a day or two here. But definitely bearish. That's done it. Keep on not ashing this cigar out. Hold on. This is why... I'm very happy that I have cleaning ladies to pick up off of my mixes. All right, there we go. Good, good, good. Sorry. Anytime burning hot coals from a, uh, whatever you want to call this, uh, ash from a cigar hits me, it gives me an initial adrenaline shock where I'm like, ah, oh, shit, that burns. Then I'm like, oh, it doesn't actually hurt that much. Then I go back about my, about my life. Um, and again, oh, hey, Gambit, how are you doing, man? Tap that like button if you enjoyed the live. I'd appreciate it if you guys did. It helps out a lot. 72 retest, uh, one SR. Let's see, Fabio waves. Uh, what about waves? Typically, guys, when you tell me what you guys want, I have no idea if you guys are trying to day trade it, swing trade it, long term invest in it. And when you guys don't tell me that information, I pretty much guess, and then I just do a very quick rapid fire because I don't know, I have no idea what you guys want me to do because I can't like do a 20 minute uh technical breakdown of every single stock. And hey, Tom, Michael Whitman to 100K subs by summer. Oh, yeah, hopefully Bitcoin to a, I'd rather Bitcoin get to 100K before I get to 100K subs, but that'll definitely be it. But thanks, Tom. Funny enough, we've had a, what, we normally have Crypto Lifer in here, and we also have Crypto Face in here a lot. Um, and now we got Tom Crown in here. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Tom also just broke 100,000 subscribers, guys, if you guys didn't know. And a coin operated. I like this channel. Smash the like button on that, gentlemen. Thank you very, very much right there. Uh, I'm holding from 30,000. Oh, so you're fine then. Uh, typically right now, guys, I'm basically just doing my dollar cost averaging. I'm just not seeing any bullish momentum for Bitcoin right now that I say, hey, I want to be loading up on this. And I'll be live a lot. I'm grinding a lot this month here. Tomorrow is going to be a little bit different because I want to move my desk into my other office. Because uh, remember, the other office got flooded a few months ago and I just... I need like somebody to help me take apart the desk because it's a larger one because um, it has like motors and shit inside of it. Move it over there. Then when I show you guys, when I have my like my full, um, when I have my full on camera like this in the future, you guys don't have to worry about seeing like the little poopy stains over there. And that's because every time Loki goes into my closet, he nose buds it from after digging in the mud. So that's just like a huge mud smear. I hate having stuff like that behind me. But, but, uh, starting tomorrow evening, you guys will not see that anymore. You guys will see in my nice entertainment studio setup where I have all my lights set up and everything looks a lot nicer and better. Uh, and it also means I can get my cleaning ladies in here and just, they can do a rehaul of my, uh, this, this secondary office space that I've created because it's turned into a mess. Like I have lots of studio equipment in here. 
uh, old Amazon boxes and they need to break all that shit down then vacuum it and I'm gonna get myself some stainless steamer because uh, I've honestly been uh, dropping too much cigar ash onto the floors here. Hey Dale, one last question. Say you bought six thousand dollars, uh, six thousand of Bitcoin, but you bought kind of high. Let's say sixty-seven thousand dollars. Now it's gone down four grand and still dropping. What do you do? Nothing or sell some? It depends on what the strategy was when you bought it. Like Michael Saylor just bought some uh, Bitcoin a few days ago as well before it started to drop even more. Um, if you're if you're looking to hold on to it for just the cycle and you, you want to you know sell to eighty thousand, ninety thousand, a hundred thousand, whatever that may be. Most likely, you're just going to hold it. If you were just looking to hold on to it for maybe a few weeks here, and you wanted to make like a 5% or 10% return on your investment, and uh, on that one, you, you probably would have sold by now. So it kind of just depends on the type of trade you're looking to do. Typically, whenever you guys do make an open trade, or oh, excuse me, when you guys do open a trade, you want to have those stop losses here. You definitely want to have those stop losses. That way, it's it automatically sells the Bitcoin, so you're not left holding a, a potential bag, if you will. Like right now, um, lit, we're doing this with uh, during tonight's stream. But you guys know I'm with Faradesk here, and we got two more exchanges sponsoring the channel starting next month. So get ready for those. But uh, oh, you guys can't see it on. Uh, <laughs> There we go. I've been buying this for the past couple weeks. This is the third week, I think. And so because of that, I'm going to put another $300 to $400 into these long-term positions. I'm going to be dollar cost averaging in here. Last time we did this, we walked away with 8,000 bucks. But before that, we ended up losing $1,000 as it was kind of going down in value. Right now we're down about $229. I'm okay with that. But every week I'm buying, I'm buying, I'm buying for that large move that I think is going to be happening over to the summer. I just hope inflation and everything kind of cools off, rate cuts happen around that time, make it a lot easier for the profit. But um, I'm okay. It's an, it's an, it's, I'm anticipating losing money for a while uh, until it makes me money. So if that's you, then you're probably just holding on through this cycle. Or you could try to sell, wait for Bitcoin to go down even more, and then buy even more Bitcoin if it goes down more. You can try to do that, but it, it really just depends on what your strategy is going forward. But uh, later on tonight, we're adding more to these positions. And oddly enough, after holding these for like two, three weeks, uh, two weeks, three weeks, yeah, three weeks, because this is the third week, which we're going to buy more. There's only a few things that are actually green right now. Floki is green. Pepe, uh, no, excuse me, uh, Baby Doge is green. Avex is green. Key is green. And that's it. Uh, definitely. Most of the stuff has come down here quite a bit here, quite a bit. And we might have only just started this drop back down to like $52,000, $53,000 or so. And thanks, Tom. I appreciate that a lot. I try to be a good dude. <laughs> yeah, no way tell. It really just depends on your personal preference. But don't be afraid of having different types of uh, portfolios for different types of strategies. Like some people will have a portfolio or an exchange where they only do day trading, one exchange where they only do swing trading, and one exchange where they only do their long-term investing. Typically... People that want to do those long-term investments, they probably won't do it in leverage trades, but what they'll do is they may have it staked or something, so they're earning interest on it. Typically for me, with those longer-term ones, um, if it's like a cycle-high type of trade, I may have interest on it, or I may just have it parked with a little bit of leverage, but if it's like something you want to hold for 5, 10 years, might as well keep it in a st cold storage, uh, especially for those Bitcoin lovers out there. Cold storage is definitely the best thing that I... Th I like to hold my stuff in. I don't even want to have the opportunity for an exchange to go down holding all my Bitcoin. Because remember, uh, last two years ago, BitBoy lost like a million or something dollars in uh, Celsius. You know, that was a lot of money to him. Imagine you losing like, you know, 50000 or or $100,000 because the exchange went down. You don't want to have to deal with that. So I typically will keep a lot of my longer term assets in cold storage and then transfer them over to an exchange like a Coinbase or something with a lot of liquidity. So I can get rid of them when I need to, when I feel like the market's uh, doing okay. That's what I did with Dogecoin back in 2020. Remember, I told you guys I had been holding it for a while. I told you guys I was going to do that first sell-off where I sold 50% of my Dogecoin back at 50 cents. I had to move it off of the cold storage into an exchange, then sell it there. Back when the, back in, <laughs> back when we had lots of exchanges to choose from. Nowadays, I think we have a decent amount, but um, it was uh, a little bit different, right? We don't have the Binances of the world, KuCoins of the world anymore. What's my bullish meme coin? 
Uh, so I was a little bit late to the rally as far as Boehm or uh, Book of Meme. I was a little bit late to Floki. But what I have been buying uh, some after the, the massive crash of like 60%, 70%. Oh, no, it was like 50%. Um, I bought some, I finally bought some Book of Meme. I'll buy some more later on in the next couple weeks. I've been buying Milady token a little bit more, and I've been buying up some Miro token. Miro is interesting because it's newer. The charts are kind of coming down quite a bit. It's a lower market cap token, so I've been trying to play around with that. If you guys want to, you can always go over to coinmarketcap.com. Go right over here to themes. Right here, this little flame. And then go down to these lower market caps. Right now, Pepe, Dog with Hat, Floki, they all have over you know a few billion dollar market cap. Same with Shiba Inu and Dogecoin, much larger market caps. But when I'm looking for stuff, you know, I got some meme, that's 400 million. I got some baby Doge coin, that's 334 million. Kakino, I don't have any of that, but I want some. Uh, Slurf, I don't even know what Slurf is, actually. I've not heard of that one yet, but it looks like new. I want to buy some Mog. Uh, Trump, I don't know if I'll buy some Trump, but I might. Um, I heard it was all the rage just a few weeks ago. Mirror right here is at $200 million market cap. Milady's at 189. Smog is at 150. Doge on Mars is at 130. So there are lots of opportunities here. Grok is at 87 million. You know, 10 to 20 bucks, or if you guys have a little more money, 100 bucks or so, just toss it in there and see where it goes. Because these ones are ultimately just going to be a very small part of your overall portfolio. But if I can dollar cost average into these, I'm going to try to get a little bit of everything here. Uh, some things like rich richquack.com yeah that one i'm not really probably going to be going into but you know things like a, maybe a turbo something that has like a nicer name i might give it the opportunity to you know 20 bucks 100 bucks a couple hundred bucks depends um like i bought a i was talking to my uh my cleaning lady the other day she comes every other sunday and um i got a, i got a couple of people that come during the weekdays but uh she was talking to me about cryptocurrency because she was like why do you have this set up here like what do you actually do and i'm like oh I talk about cryptocurrencies. I talk about what I like, what I don't like, the technicals or the data. Kind of went over her head a little bit, but I I bought fifty dollars of mirror for her as a one time tip, and I said whatever this goes to at the cycle highs or whatever, I'll sell it and I'll give it to you in uh cash because you know don't want to have it be taxed. Well, I'll pay the taxes. <laughs> she won't. That'll be a gift of mine. And hey, Jim. Thank you very much for the super chat. Sorry for the... Jesus. This thing is nice and oily. I love it. And it's finally staying lit. But man, the smoke it gives off is uh, quite a bit here. Uh, and hey, Jim. Mike, can you give me some tea on MLN USD? Bought the cup and handle formation on the daily chart. And I'm wondering if I'll make another crazy move. Yeah, let's go over here very fast. MLN. So the good thing for you right now is that we were just talking about the dollar index. There is a chance where the dollar index gets rejected here. Did we look at another chart? This, this was the first breakout there, but we were looking at another one here. This goes for a lot of you guys' trades. We're looking at this much longer trend line here from all the way back starting in 2022, September, uh, until where we are now, obviously 2024, a couple of years later, uh, almost a couple of years later. Uh, and we're looking at a possible level to get rejected from, which could hopefully help Bitcoin out here, which is what I'm hoping for. The only way Bitcoin really starts to go down to 52,000, 55,000 in my opinion, is if the dollar index actually does have this breakout. But going back to the token we were just talking about there, MLN Tether, there we go. And you bought the cup and handle on the daily chart. Okay, good, good, good. It did have a breakout here. I would say it, you at least want to be scaling out. For This is what I'd be. I already would be scaling out of this position. I'd be backing up to the weekly chart a little bit. Uh, I might try to add a Fibonacci extension from this low to this high back down to this low. Kind of an iffy proposition because I guess you could start from there. But typically my personal preference is to go all the way down to the bottom here. And you've already kind of hit that price target right there of around 33.69. So I'd be out quite a bit here if you bought like around $222. I'd be quite a bit out by $34 here. Now, uh, if we kind of go back into the daily chart. I might move my stop loss up here towards 27 to $28 just to make sure if it does come crashing down while you're asleep or something, you can at least know that you, you locked in profits from buying over here. 
on this cup over here, maybe around 20 bucks, 22 bucks, and you're still looking to sell it for at least 27 bucks, which is a good amount of profit there. And then you kind of just wait and see what happens next. So far, it's in a nice bullish move. You see a little bit of bearish oscillators here. Things are calming down a little bit. If it doesn't start to have a larger move, I would say over the next 10 hours, 12 hours, you probably want to scale out a little bit more. But to me, that first scale out level would have been somewhere between 29.82 and 33.57 here. It looks like it still has a little bit more juice, but if you start to see it stagger and not break out back above this $32 level, that's where I think I'd be a little bit more concerned that eventually it starts to top off and start heading back down a little bit more, getting a little bit more choppy, especially because this move was what? Uh, cup and handle move is pretty legendary here. Let's just say you bought the halfway points and not even at the, the Fibonacci level down here. I did come up like 41, 50, 56% at the high. That's a pretty good move for just a few days. Um, but I definitely would be in the scale out mode. And so I, I, I'd be locking in profits right now instead of necessarily just trying to hope that it goes up more. I hope it goes up more, but I would make sure I just have some profit to walk away from the trade because it was a very good buy and the price is very much higher than when you bought it. So you're in a really good position here. And hey Dale, generally you want to avoid selling just uh, just to to just buy in again and attempt to bring your buy in price down, right? Well, it depends. So there are different types of categories for people here. There are people that have been with me on this channel since Bitcoin was like, well, at least in the last bear market, Bitcoin was like 16,000, 17,000, very low levels. For people like that, every time they buy, we're averaging up. So it's a whole different experience. Um, if you bought at 65,000, 68,000, 70,000 and so forth, yeah, it's okay to average down right now in anticipation of a large move coming up over the next few months. That's what I personally am hoping for. Um, but there comes a point where you, like right now, I'm not even buying much altcoins and I'm still patiently waiting and waiting and waiting uh, because I think we may come down even more, so I'm just being patient with it. But as far as, um, you know, avoid selling, some people, depending on who you are, they will do more swing trading instead of uh, long-term investing in a crypto market, in, in a bull market. So they may have bought the breakout around $30,000. Or let me, let me show you this way, probably better. Uh, Bitcoin, let me go over here to Smart Money Concepts from Lux Algo. Pop that on, there we go. So some people may have bought this initial buy sign way over here where everything was kind of aligned, all right? And they may have sold somewhere up here, or they may have sold somewhere up here along different Fibonacci levels. So, for example, here, once they know what they were holding on to, we got a high there, a low here. Right? There was a breakout that happened right here back when uh, October was coming around, back when the kind of rate hikes were kind of ending. Um, they may have thought of selling right here, right here, right here, right here. There are people already scaling out at these levels, especially if you go over here to the monthly chart, right? They've been scaling out for a while. This is kind of glitched out right now, so don't worry about the monthly chart here. Um, but yeah, let's go back over here very fast. But it really depends on what you guys are looking to do and how long you guys want to hold on to it. Uh, for swing traders, you don't necessarily want to do that, but for long-term investing, for the cycle high, which may be like $90,000, $100,000, $150,000, whatever, um, that's what you guys are most likely doing right now. That's what I'm doing right now for my long term. I'm just buying more and more and more. I'm not selling anything. Um, but again, you know, those come with their own risk and so forth. The herp and dirt pattern. <laughs> Why is the dollar dollar index pump like that? There's a few reasons. Um, so first of all, Jerome Powell this week was very, very dovish, a little bit too dovish if you ask me. And he pretty much said he's he's focusing more on the economy and he pretty much just kind of like ignored high inflation. He was like, yeah, it's going up. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Kind of just like brushed it off, so to speak. Um, to me, that's not good. That 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 justifies the dollar index going higher, um, which what made it come lower was the fact that he said no more interest rate hikes. So they're not thinking of any interest rate hikes at all this year. And they're just saying, okay, we're going to still have three rate cuts, which is what we, everybody thought in the first place, but we're going to be moving those back a little bit. And then on top of that, I think we just had this, this page open. Hey, there. The U.S. House of Representatives just passed $1.2 trillion of spending. 
uh, hours before the shutdown deadline. And this is going to pay for three quarters of the government's, uh, three quarters of the, the government's budget for this year, uh, for the fiscal year, which means um, if the next one is uh, somewhat like this, 1.2 trillion is what? Three quarters. Uh, my brain is bad. Uh, I used to be able to do this shit in my head. But basically, it might be somewhere around, what, 30, you know, it could be another 0. 0.5, like a 500 to maybe $700 billion we have to add on top of this. But this is only going to last until the end of September. That's the end of the fiscal year. So we're probably going to see more and more spending. More and more spending is not good for the overall dollar here. So that's that's part of it. And I think we might be looking at some more turmoil. I'll fix it next time. Um, this lady, her name is Marjorie Taylor Greene. Um, she's a pretty prominent Republican because she's very anti-establishment, very raw. Like, you know, she's very, um, she likes to be in front of the cameras and talk and stuff like that quite a bit. Um, and I think she just said she's going to try to oust the Speaker, Mar uh, not McCarthy, he's already ousted, <laughs> Speaker Mike Johnson. So that may lead to a little bit more turmoil. And that's led us to here, the dollar index, all of a sudden, having a smaller breakout right there, probably headed back up towards 106, or if you want to zoom this out here, take out that breakout, go over here a little bit more and just zoom out. Comes all the way back up here to the high inflation days of 2022. And all of a sudden we're looking at a much larger breakout, which could take us a lot higher here. And then if we back out to a monthly chart, then we start to put up Sorry for all the lines and stuff, but we'd start looking at those next levels of resistance here, which so far haven't really mattered. You know, we broke above this level of resistance right there, so I'm not thinking it's going to be too, you know, too important. Maybe if I adjust this. No, there's not really much I can adjust it to, though. Yeah, so at this point, though, it definitely feels like we want to break out and just start launching back up here, which is going to be unfortunate. Um, what could help us out though is if on April 10th we have CPI data coming out. And of course it, it didn't die. Wow, this thing is good to oil. Uh nope. There we go. Alright. April 10th at 8.30 a.m. I will be sleeping at this time as always, but uh, April 10th, 8.30 a.m., which is 5.30 a.m. my time, 8.30 uh, a.m. Eastern time, you will see the CPI data being announced. If it is good data and it is not hot like it has been February and January, I, in fact, think we will see Bitcoin go boom uh, out of the gate. Just boom. And everything will go boom. Um, if it is bad. <laughs> We may see the market get a little bit more uh, sideways for a while, even downwards, um, which will not be good uh, because it may force the Fed to pivot a little bit from more of this dovish stance it's been taking and go a little bit more into a hawkish stance where now they have to open the door to rate hikes, which I don't think anybody is anticipating right now. Nobody is priced in, that's for sure. And that could lead to some really drastic moves in really the stock market and possibly the cryptocurrency market. Cryptocurrency is a little bit different because, of course, we have the Bitcoin halving, which is just going to make a supply crunch. A whole bunch of stuff is going to go, going to be different there. Um, but you will see the stock market at least taking a pretty big dip off of that news. Oh, it was good until I. Oh. All right. Good enough for now. She's full of shit. That's what she is. <laughs> oh, Marshall <Taylor> Green. <laughs> I don't follow her too much. I know uh, Colorado, right? Colorado. Um, but yeah, she is. She's one of those. Uh, oh, I don't have the. There you go. Yeah, she's she's one of those who likes to be in front of the camera. Uh, I don't. I like the politicians who kind of sink into the background a little bit, but. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what goes into uh, the mind of a politician who wants me in the camera so much versus one that wants to kind of just sit back. 
because you can see there's clearly people that uh i think it's maybe a level of ambition could be that you know that maybe they want to rise the ranks or something like that if i ever went to congress i'd only want, want to be there for maybe one or two terms and i'd be like i'm out guys i want to go live my life And hey, peace. Looks like this cigar is nice, not like the last one. No, it was bad. This one actually gave me a little bit of troubles earlier on, but it's because this one, oh, this one's already dying again. It's because I messed it up. You see how it has that weird little curve there? It's like part of it went and part of it's not lighting. Um, light this one up. Um, this one has a lot more oil in the tobacco. And so because of that, it's just a little bit harder for me to stay lit here, but the smoke is, it's a good flavor. It's one of my favorite types of cigars. This one is just a little bit not as the best condition, which is okay. Not every, remember, these things are all hand rolled. Uh, and these people that are rolling, they're rolling for a while. There we go. Maybe a little better. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, I'm not going to give it too much grief because this the flavor is really, really good. Just the smoke is kind of... Freaking looks like I'm in a forest fire over here. Turkey just hit a rate hike to 50%. Yeah, I mean, let alone, remember, remember Japan just went positive for the first time in like decades or something like that? Well, like, uh, yeah. So this is the max for Japan. You can see Japan is it's been up to nine percent before back in the seventies, back when America had a high inflation as well. But then you know since two thousand seven, two thousand eight, it was at 05 percent. If I go over here to the last ten years, in two thousand fifteen, it was at zero percent. Then they went down to negative point one percent, and now they're all the way back up to zero percent. And when the news came out. It was shown that they're giving up on trying to uh, on trying to manage their uh, their bond rates. What was the exact term here? Let's see if I can find it out for you here. Here's one. The Bank of Japan just made a historic, a historic rate pivot. Here's what could happen. I'll just read the highlights right here, or the key points as they put it. Bank of Japan Governor, I can't pronounce that, had uh, had re repeatedly said these talks would be key to sustainable price increases that would inform any decision to hike rates across the first time in 17 years. Bank of Japan policymakers expect higher salaries to lead the virtual, uh, the virtuous spiral with domestic demand fueling inflation. The decision Tuesday sparked a sharp sell-off in the Japanese yen, which uh, dived to its weakest uh, since 2008 against the euro and hit a four-month low against the U.S. dollar. All right, so uh, it ended its experiment with negative rates. Um, you know, it's it's weird. They're the world's uh, what fourth largest economy. You know, they're America. We're doing okay right now, but the world's kind of not in the best spot here. I think there's even countries right now, like Germany, I think it's in a recession. I think the UK is in recession. Those are some pretty big economies themselves. I think Germany has the largest economy in Europe, I believe. I, I think it does. I like the US politician who wears the debt clock badge. <laughs> the debt clock is kind of going and crazy, kind of going crazy, like a... Is this one? No, that's debt to GDP. There it is. Government debt. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> uh, it just keeps on going up. We'll, we'll try to figure it out, I'm sure. It's not something that me or you or anybody else watching the stream or any crypto stream can manage here. Uh, you know, we're just going to have to live with the results here and see what happens next. It's just kind of going crazy. Um, I was hoping that after COVID, we could kind of tame things down. 
but I don't think we want to. I think we just want to spend more, spend more, spend more, spend more. And you can see this is all happening during, uh, it doesn't matter if you guys are left or right, purple, orange, I don't give a you know, flying feff. Um, it goes up no matter who is president. No matter who is president, it goes up. We got Bush over here, got wars, you know, got Obama over here, financial crisis stuff, fixing the financial crisis. Uh, Trump over here, then you got COVID over here. You know, that's I, that's understandable, I guess, because they told everybody to go home, basically. Um, and you got uh, Joe Biden right now, you know, and no matter what, it doesn't matter. You can red, blue, whatever, still going up. And so because of that, I don't think no matter who is in office, who I don't think anybody can really change it. They can try, but again, the only person I've seen over the past few years that's actually done meaningful change to their economy was the 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 guy in freaking Argentina, the lion dude, uh, Malay, Malay. He he's been uh, he's been doing some radical changes. But this guy is like he's he's taking down whole bureaucratic departments. Can you ever imagine America taking down a bureaucratic department? No, those things are cemented in stone. <laughs> There's no way you get rid of those. Do I not have a cutter? Oh, I have a cutter. I just don't want to use it. Like, I prefer just to kind of balance out like that um, with, without having to cut into it too much. Do I smoke any ganja or just cigars? We live in the same areas. Where do you get your cigars from? Uh, I get my cigars usually from friends, uh, although I do go to a lounge every now and again called uh, Smokey Joe's and... Uh, what is it called? Uh... Where is it called? Uh, Fife. Excuse me, Fife. Um, which is pretty nice. Um, but typically, I get a lot of my cigars from friends. And they usually have much better collections than I. One of my friends is trying to build up a, uh, a cigar shop in Woodenville. I don't know where exactly it is, but... I've seen the plans and stuff, and it's not supposed to be built until uh, two uh, next year. That's when all the shops open up. But it seems to be really cool. Like, uh, Let me see. Way up here in Woodenville. You know, Seattle's way up here. It's above Bellevue. And then there's going to be some type of huge five star resort built somewhere around here. I'm not entirely sure where. Um, it's going to be a district like this, kind of, but like a little bit nicer. A lot nicer, actually. But you see how they have these, like, you know, wine stores and everything like that, this whole wine area, it's going to be one that has like a five-star hotel and things for weddings and events and stuff like that. Um, you guys know that there's something called wealth inequality going on. Well, this with a very, very wealthy, you're going to have all their cool events is going to be up in Woodenville pretty soon, which will be really nice. Bellevue is a really nice place too. I like Bellevue a lot. It's just kind of far away from where I live. World Bet Clock? Oh, World Bet Clock? Yeah. Here. Look at that. Spending's going up. Debt's going up. Medicare is going up. Social Security is going up. Defense is going up. Interest on debt's going up. Our interest on in our debt's probably going to hit a trillion dollars here in the next few uh, years, too. Just imagine, uh, like you have a credit card, and just the interest payments alone are a trillion dollars. Oh, oh. That's just, oh, it's so wild. It's so, so wild. El Salvador president jailed the gangs, went to Bitcoin standard. Thumbs up for me. I'm interested to see how that works out. And the guy finally moved it to cold storage. <laughs> finally. <laughs> oh, man. And hey, protect me right now. We still have a pretty similar support level as before, kind of around that sixty-two to $60,000 level. After that, things get a little bit more heated where we start coming back down below $55,000 to $52,000. And that's most likely where we're going to be heading unless we can, unless Bitcoin can really try to hold these support levels that we're looking at right now. One trillion every 100 days. It actually, Kenobi, it's probably up even more now since we passed that, that bill a few hours ago. Well, actually, it hasn't been made into law, but I doubt they're going to change much of it before it heads to the president's desk to be signed. So, yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be a wonky time for sure, guys. What's right there? 
I hope for a country if they're using a uh, multi cold storage. Oh yeah, uh, any country that buys Bitcoin should hold it as a storage. I think America should not sell its Bitcoin. I think America should hold its Bitcoin. I, I feel no, I see no reason why they should sell it. Just have it as an asset, you know, if for nothing else, right? Um, can you imagine if America tries to tokenize our debt? <laughs> oh man. Would a long be reasonable right now or short? Say we hold at 60,000. Most likely uh, shorts are probably going to be more profitable here uh, unless unless the dollar index gets rejected off of that support level we were just talking about. Uh, shorts are probably going to be more prominent here. The way I trade is I don't I don't short until I see everything going in the other the right direction for me to be shorting. But uh, that usually doesn't give me so many trades to have. So right now, you know, on the as far as the daily charts are concerned, yeah, shorting is probably going to be much more beneficial than trying to go long at these, this point. Um, you still want to have a stop loss, though, just in case for whatever reason, Bitcoin tries to have a rapid move up. Like, um, I think somebody was asking me about shorting back over here. Uh, yeah. Was it here? Yeah, somebody opened up a short, like, right over here, around, like, 62,500. It went up. Right. And they were asking me, should they sell the short or should they hold the short or what should they be doing? You know, if you're buying over here, your stop loss is actually probably over here, to be honest. But you can see how it didn't really go down in a nice, easy pattern. We had Jerome Powell coming to talk. And if you didn't have a stop loss, I mean, you were just freaking hammered and or liquidated at that point because that thing was just how far did Bitcoin go after this drop? We went up uh, 7000 bucks or 12 percent and just in less than 24 hours. Everybody that had a short here was definitely not in the best of uh, moods, right? And again, over here, you're going to have to give yourself some leeway, which to me just means that you want to have a lower leverage and not a higher leverage at this point, just to kind of protect yourself, because we could always be having these stronger moves here, especially if the dollar index does get, um, if the dollar index does get rejected off of that trend line that we were talking about, you may just see this end up being a higher low situation. Where we come down, go up here, and then break out, and then all of a sudden we're gearing up for some type of cup and handle for Bitcoin. To me, that doesn't seem reasonable happening right now, but it's still an open possibility. I would anticipate that we consolidate for a while and probably try to break down below sixty thousand bucks sometime this weekend. Um, you know, but there we go. That's where the shorts would be really coming in at this point. Hey, Lemon, I'm not entirely sure. I think I don't think uh, I don't think I don't think um, El Salvador is doing that. I think this is much more simple. It'd be funny if a Dogecoin ETF got approved before Ethereum ETF. I mean, <laughs> the way the SEC is trying to go on a jihad against uh, Ethereum right now is crazy. I don't know why they're so anti um, anti Ethereum. But I think it's just because they lost that battle against Bitcoin and they saw how much how much money flowed into Bitcoin afterwards. I bet you would see a lot of money also flowing into Ethereum. If not, just it doesn't have to be one percent of a portfolio. It can just be a half a percent or a quarter percent of a portfolio. That's still enough money to move Ethereum a whole lot. Because if you go back over here, CoinMarketCap.com, Bitcoin's market cap is one point two trillion. Ethereum is only at 400 billion and I say only but you know only 400 billion you want to go look at some companies out there that have uh, market caps of 400 billion it's not going to be the big names like Apple and stuff those are much much higher Max is much much higher so I could definitely see Ethereum having a parabolic run this cycle um, and it would all be because of a, an Ethereum ETF so they don't want that to happen. Anyway Wilder uh so far, Bitcoin kind of went back into that bearish mood that it's been over the last few days. We still have some optimism here as long as we don't start to break down below that support from a few days ago, which right now is 60,775. The big thing here, uh, Wilder, is this dollar index. Let's get out of that. So you remember we were talking about that breakout potential from right here to here? We broke out of that, but we're really just really close to this. So this is all the way back over here from the 2022 highs. This is over here from 2023. This is when Bitcoin broke out. 
Remember, Bitcoin broke out right here. Same thing. Breakout on the dollar index, we were getting smacked back down. And now all of a sudden, the dollar index is right up against the level of resistance. And I don't know if we're necessarily going to hold on to that or not. Um, heck, even typically like this, if you wanted to, you could always try to do it to this one here. And in that case, we are breaking out because technically these are just false breakouts, false breakouts. We might have a confirmed breakout if we look for another, what, uh, another hour or so, hour and a half. So I'm going to choose to say, hey, we'll probably have a breakout next week, though. That could really push us down. I guess the good thing for Bitcoin, though, is if you do want to have a reversal, the dollar index will be frozen for a couple days because, you know, it's not 24-7. Um, so that might be able to help us out here quite a bit. Uh, this four-hour chart. Oh, did I get rid of it? Or am I on the wrong thing? Yeah, there we go. This four-hour chart shows you everything to know, at least for right now. Four-hour death cross is kind of incoming. We're trying to hold support levels here and try to have a higher low, which could give us a breakout. That breakout can try to mediate some of those bearish... Um, Momentum shifts that we've been talking about for the past, so what, like two weeks now? Uh, but definitely, uh, dollar index is still a big thing. And we have a while before we see the inflation data coming out from the CPI report. We have two weeks, three weeks, one, two, like two and a half weeks, two and a half weeks or so. And you can see right now, Bitcoin's trying to hold on to this support, but it's not doing a great job of it. We got a very small level of support over here on 62,601. And it's trying, it's just, you know, it's it's trying, it's trying to hold, <laughs> it's trying to hold. Ugh, oh, time for water. I've been throwing up this water thing every day and this is the best thing ever. This is meant for my sweet tea. What, no, not even sweet tea. This I got this picture specifically for a loose leaf tea where I just put a bunch of black tea in here water and you let it rest overnight for 12 hours and you got fresh tea that has a natural sweetness that does not require any sugar because you know i don't need more sugar in my life but what do you call it it's great it's just weird to drink from a straw in front of people <clears throat> there we are but yeah you can definitely see bitcoin uh coming down minute by minute trying to have another larger move on the downside for today ETF is trash. <laughs> Probably the most biased person against Ethereum here. Uh, well, hey, Ethereum is trash. What are you? Are you pro Solana? Are you pro Solana? Because I know a lot of people that uh, think Ethereum is trash. They they love Solana a lot. Kathy Woods is bound to be pushing a Solana ETF. Oh, I'd be buying that Solana ETF too. Remember, Solana is all the way down here at seventy five billion. Way way less than Ethereum. Um, you know. I got a lot of Solana right now because of that. Well, mostly because it crashed a lot, but I didn't even get the best prices. I, I was a little bit hesitant to buy into Solana because of all the stuff going on with uh, Do Kwon at the time, you know? Gensler wants to leave his position before he gets uh, approved. Oh, before the ETF gets approved or shortly after, he'd be flooded with applications for so many ETFs. Oh, yeah. But I think for Gensler, honestly... He wants to become the Treasury Secretary. Janet Yellen is old, and it's hard to run a government agency at her age. And I think she just wants to retire and have you know enjoy the rest of her life. Nobody wants to work that long. I don't know why bureaucrats want to do it so much. Are we going to break down or not? Second chart. Let's see if they push us down or not. Again, this is just a small level of support. But how old is Janet Yellen? I feel like I should know this, but I don't. Yeah, she's 77 years old. This woman has more than enough money to just not be working right now. And walls getting chewed apart, and there we go. So, yeah, still getting beaked down. Support levels aren't holding up as much as we want to at this point. So back over to the 15. You can see it right there. We can get rid of that line now. And now we're probably heading back down towards that next one around 62,050 uh, or so. And then, of course, the one down here around 60,850. 
we can kind of go back in a little bit more here. So yeah, so definitely looking at Bitcoin coming down a little bit more. A death cross. So a death cross is basically just when a lower moving average crosses below a higher moving average. Um, so like, let's say the 20 moving average crosses below a 50 or a 50 crosses down below a 200 or a 20 crosses down below a 50. Those are all death crosses. For example, right here, you can see on my chart, we have, let me go to like a larger time frame. So there's a green one right here. This is a 20 moving average. This blue one is a 50. When the 20 crosses down below the 50, a lot of times that's a bearish signal. That means momentum is shifting to the downward side and people take that as an opportunity to start opening up shorts during this time. So again, death cross right here. You see that Bitcoin went down, right? Another death cross over here between the 20 and the 200, 50 and the 200. Um, this one was a little bit more weird though because this was actually a news event. This was a banking crisis. So, you know, but you can see the 20 crossed above the 50 here. Things went higher over time. And then we had the 50 go above the 200 here. Things went higher over time. And over here, uh, death cross down, death cross down, death cross down, golden cross up, golden cross up, golden cross, well, it's there, up. And golden cross is when the 50 or the, the 20 crosses above the 50 or the 50 crosses above the 200. Um, but there are lots of different time frames you guys can use when it comes to, um, not time frames, lots of different numbers you guys can use for your moving averages. So it doesn't have to be a 20 and a 50 and a 200. That's just what I use. It can be like a five, a nine and a seven or something. Um, it can be a whole bunch of different things. I would encourage you guys to go over to, um, what is it? Um, I would encourage you guys to go look at um, ChatGBT and ask it for some advice on moving averages and which ones would probably be better for your specific trading style. If you have a trading style, which I hope you guys do, uh, you could you could summarize what your trading style is and you can ask it, hey, what moving averages should I probably be using for this type of thing? And then once it gives you some, back test it and say, hey, it's been giving me too many false signals or not enough signals, and it will adjust the numbers appropriately so you guys can have some fun and uh, backtest all those until you find the best one that suits your strategy. Looks like 177 year old. Uh, <laughs> definitely old. I don't wanna be working uh, when I'm 77. Like when I'm 77, I still think I'll be doing YouTube streams and stuff and still trading, but that's not the same as working for your bureaucratic institution right um i'll have a staff that kind of helps me out a lot more even though they have staffs but like you know i'll have some dude that's like in the 30s or 40s running the majority of my youtube channel for me and i'll just be here ha having fun talking with you guys making videos and streaming that's all i plan to do when i'm in my 60s and above uh heck even when i'm in my 40s and above if i can do that I i'll do it um all i want to do is talk and chill the like the other work that comes along with youtube it's, it's much more stressful uh, which is why I can't stream as much as I want to. I'd be streaming all day if I could. Uh, well, not really, because I, you know, take my dog out, have fun. Uh, the sun's coming out in a little bit. I'll probably take him out here in a little bit, and uh, we'll be playing fetch out in the back. Um, but, you know, m much different, much different type of <laughs> life I have planned for myself. But I don't crave power. Uh, people that are bureaucratic, you know, they crave, they have a different type of ambition, power, and influence. Um, they, they live off of that stuff. I, I, I don't care. Like, if you go over to Janet Yellen, Right, you can see the academic career, Federal Reserve, Council of Economic Advisors, return to the Federal Reserve, after the Federal Reserve, Secretary of Treasury, Economic Philosophy, Honors and Awards, some of that. Um, you know, I don't want to do all that type of stuff. Uh, right, Yellen obtained a position of Assistant Professor of Economics at Harvard University, where she taught from 1971 to 1976, and then it goes off to uh. The Fed. Let's see, the Fed's Division of International Finance. A teaching position at London School of Economics. That's, that's a pretty cool crest right there. Let's 
Let's see. University of California, Berkeley. School. A lot more school teaching, which is kind of nice, honestly. Uh, leave of absence from public service. Oh, they don't tell what she's been doing. Well, she went to the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco. Bottles. Federal Reserve. Economic advisors. Reserve. <laughs> Vice Chair of Federal Reserve. Right. Uh, uh, Chair of Federal Reserve. Yeah. A, a whole bunch of stuff. A whole bunch of stuff. You take a look at these people right here. And most people are probably not happy with any of these individuals. You know, uh, this guy, this guy, <laughs> if you want to understand the way the Fed thinks, he's Alan Greenspan. I'll show you a quote of his that you guys will just love. Um, maybe I can find it on X. Oh, no, Twitter. Uh, media. No? No. Can I find it here? Fed. No, I can't find the interview. I I had it for a while on my screen, but I don't know what I did with it. YouTube or let's watch Bitcoin while this while I'm doing all this searching here. You know what? I don't even have music on right now. I'm just realizing that, but bear with me here. So let's open this up. Let's go over here. Let's make the audio be up all the way. Let me put my headphones on as normal. All right. And then just listen to this quote that he has. It'll make you understand how people in government think, okay? And look at the guy's face next to him over here on the, the right-hand side. Oops. I gotta turn the volume up on this. There we are. Are U.S. Treasury bonds still safe to invest in? Very much so. I think there's a. This is not an issue of credit rating. The United States can pay any debt it has because we can always print money to do that. So there is zero probability of default. What I. Th okay. There you go. It's it's a really simple quote. Nothing nothing you know nothing crazy about it. Um, let me add some music on here now by going over to Pretzel. But the guy like these people they don't care like they want to print more money. Print 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 does not matter at all. Unlimited money is the way we're going about this, and it there's no there's no going back. <laughs> we're just going to print more money. Forget about trying to solve the problems. Printing more money is solving the problem. All right, now what type of station do I want to listen to? Maybe something of a chill EDM vibe to it? There we go. Hey, Nathan. Uh, no, not that I know of. It does not have a lot of slippage or things like that, no. But you're not swapping on there or that type of stuff. You're just buying, uh, you're mostly day trading and swing trading on that platform. What do you think about Sheeb? I like Sheeb a lot, but I'm not going to be buying any right now. That thing looks like it wants to fall off of a freaking cliff right here. And once it falls off that cliff, I'll be happy to buy up some more Sheeb for sure. They will let the next generations pay the price and enjoy life. Oh yeah, but still. Like, damn, we're still going to pay for it. You know, we're still, even somebody in their 50s or 60s right now is going to have to pay for it at some point. Unless they're dying in like, you know, in 10 years or something like that. We're all going to have to pay for it, no matter what our age is. Take off this uh, band right here. Oh, if I can. Oh, there's the band. Uh, but yeah, definitely a different mindset here. 
It's why I typically don't like Fed institutionals because the Fed is supposed to monitor monetary policy. I, they're not supposed to necessarily care about the economy. They need to manage everything so like prices stay stable. Businesses will be able to fix themselves here, to, you know, you would expect. But what's happened now is the Fed has taken over so, so much control that... What's a good way without like really just sounding like a fucking... Uh, uh, without getting upset about it because I hate... I don't like the Fed that much. Um, they've given in to this, this idea that if the market throws a tissy fit, they're going to change their position. Not because average Americans are hurting but because the market is hurting. And it, it just doesn't work well with me because again, if you think about it, not many Americans really have all too much money in the stock market or in the crypto market overall. Many are just living paycheck to paycheck, so they're not really feeling that that wealth uh, growing. So if you don't have access to the stock market or the crypto market in any way right now, you're pretty much like, you know, if you guys want to just have some, some positions that you just guys are just holding for years and years and years, you guys are really doing yourself a disservice um, because even if the dollar crashes and, you know, bad things happen where the dollar becomes a lot less worth it, worth uh, becomes a lot worth becomes worth a lot less, excuse me, over the next few decades. Well, that means everything against bit, uh, the dollar will go much higher. Bitcoin against the dollar will go higher. The stock market against the dollar will go much higher because, you know, you hear all these record profits happening for all these companies. It's because the value of the dollar is worth so much less, but of course they're having to make more money just to justify everything going on. Record profits, record profits, record profits. Well, yeah, the dollar is worth a lot less than it was just a couple years ago, right? Oh, uh, this is just a cigar. This is just a cigar. Nothing crazy. Have you seen Skid on Soul? It has nice pump release. I have not, but that's a good thing right there. Anything that's having a pump in this market is something you guys want to be looking at, at least for some day trading. Do you think Bitcoin is only worth DCAing for one who wants to just sit on it for uh, and forget it for years or come with that effort? I dollar cost average into a lot of stuff. Uh, Ethereum, Solana, uh, Dogecoin, a little bit of Shiba Inu because those things are the head meme tokens. Um, right now I'm dollar cost averaging. There's things like Matic, um, Mana, Sand, some Metaverse. I've been dollar costing a lot into uh, Fetch AI, Ajax, RLC, a little bit into Ocean. I just moved Ocean into my long-term account to see how that does for the next 10 years or so. Um, but yeah, much more than just Bitcoin in my opinion. But Bitcoin is definitely something that's probably going to take up the majority of you guys' portfolios if you're doing those long-term accounts. Um, I don't know, Bitcoin Maxis have a good case for it just because, you know, Bitcoin's the leading thing here. Um, but I still put other, I put my money into other uh, altcoins as well or other coins as well. Am I cooked if I longed uh, Solana at 180? Not necessarily cooked, but it might take a while for it to get back up to that level. That's for sure. And issue should not be, yeah, I will be streaming a little bit later on tonight. That Yeah, yeah, yeah. I sold Bitcoin for $1,000. Uh, so did I did right? Yeah, if you made $1,000 profit. Yeah, yeah, you did a good thing right there. Profit, profit is never bad, right? People get mad if they're not making as much profit as they want to and all that type of stuff. Nah, profit is profit. Your portfolio got larger. Now you're able to buy Bitcoin again or any altcoins you guys want again. And then you guys will be able to watch that go up in the in the future, right? And Eugene, yeah, yeah, it, it, it pretty much happens like that. It's just the way that everybody, uh, how do I say it? Everybody is short-term thinkers these days. You, you can blame Facebook, social media and stuff and TV. We really have short attention spans, so people forget that Bitcoin is at sixty-three thousand dollars right now. We just forget, you know. Um, I guess the good thing for me is I stream every day for the most part, so I remember when Bitcoin was at sixteen thousand, seventeen thousand, eighteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, forty, you know, eighty, whatever, or seventy. Excuse me. Um, so I'm typically not too concerned, but for people that kind of you know don't zoom out enough, it can be can can be kind of scary sometimes. Uh, you might want to just put in five, five or ten percent of your excess income into, uh, into cryptocurrency. Uh, that's what I was doing when I was first getting into Bitcoin. Uh, I was buying Bitcoin when I was making eight bucks an hour. So, uh, I, Bitcoin back in those days was like thirty-five hundred, four thousand, five thousand dollars. So a little bit different. Um, but yeah, 
Uh, I typically just dollar cost average into it. Over time, it should do very, very well. But don't worry about how much you're putting in there. Just make, make sure that you're putting something in there. And the big thing I would tell you guys is don't put so much money into Bitcoin that you feel like you're going to have to sell some for some emergency. Like you want to just have that off to the, you guys can't see my hand, but off to the side, off to the side. Um, you know, like if you put like a bunch of Bitcoin, if you put a lot of money in Bitcoin and you, you're like, uh oh, I don't have enough money for rent this month. I got to sell my Bitcoin order to pay for rent. Don't put so much money into Bitcoin then. You know what I'm saying? You want to definitely uh, not put too much in there. Just enough to, you know, see uh, see the account actually growing or the number of Bitcoin you own growing. Hey, Chuck, it looks like we're probably heading down at least below 55000 maybe $52,000 is going to be that level. We'll wait and see. Sometimes people say 52000 then we just come down to 54000 then bounce back up. I'm dollar cost averaging right now just to kind of mitigate some of that, but I have a chunk of cash left over just in case we do start breaking down below $55,000 or so. Um, that would probably happen next week, though, not this week. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Oscar. Um, down below, I have a link for BYD for that you may like. They have a ton of different tokens as far as spot and leverage in case you want to do 2x leverage buys, you know, 3x leverage buys. BYD Fi is a good one. Thoughts on the weekend, Tyler? Um, I would expect us to try to consolidate and hold over 60, uh, 62 to sixty thousand dollars. If we start to break down below that, I'd be a little bit more concerned. I would anticipate a lot more bearish activity going into next week once the dollar index opens back up, and then we're probably going to be breaking out from there, and things might be a little bit more um, uh, bearish for sure. Yeah, no worries, Chuck. Happy to help you out. Let's see. Hey, I know it's uh, Chopper Logo. I appreciate you guys. All right, but uh, right now, everybody, I'm going to end the stream here because I am going to be going live again in a few more hours. Bitcoin's consolidating on the downward side, slowly grinding down. We're not looking at anything crazy right now. We're probably going to try to bounce off this 200 here. That's the current level of support if you guys are looking for a moving average, a 200 moving average in the four-hour chart. I'm going to take this handsome dog out here. Look. Oh, where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Come here. Up. Oh. Every time I do this, if he don't, I don't, if I don't have a treat, he's looking for a toy to uh, play with. Loki. Yeah, there you go. We're going to go outside. He's going to get some exercise so that when I stream later on, you guys will, uh, well, I'll be able to talk with you guys because I, I want to make sure he gets all of the exercise he needs and I go, I got to go on a walk myself. Um, but yeah, be mindful, be aware of what Bitcoin's doing right now. looks like we're consolidating a little bit more. We're definitely still bearish. I know I've been saying this for a couple weeks now, but nothing has still made me feel optimistic about where Bitcoin's going after the next few days here. So I'm being patient. I'm watching to see what's going to happen next. And from there, um, there you go. I'm sorry, Loki's over here trying to sniff something. Um, I'll see you guys in just a few more hours. I'll probably go live around six o'clock or seven o'clock tonight. And then we'll have another three hour stream. And then after that, I may sneak out around 10 o'clock and I may go smoke a cigar with a couple buddies down at the, uh, the cigar lounge or something. But anyway, I'll see you guys a little bit later. I will be live again. So keep an eye out for my next thumbnail here. Um, and, you know, just, just relax. The four hour chart just sort of, sort of, just start going bearish again. Excuse me, guys. And then I'm kind of waiting to see if we do make a play down towards $60,000 or so. From there, we might have another opportunity to bounce. But again, we haven't really found a way to bounce back up yet. In order to get more optimistic, you're going to want to see Bitcoin break above 68,343. We have to break this cycle of lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. We have to really break that cycle and then continue to consolidate from there and not keep on breaking down here. Because remember, we had a lower high over here. We broke out, went up a little bit higher, then we did all of a sudden kind of come back down. Watch the momentum. It's going to be very, 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 very important. Thanks, everybody.